and I whispered, I said, can you help me, please? I can't, I don't need to watch. Bob soon realized who was at his door. You're the guy the Coast Guard's looking for. And of course, by this time, the hovercraft is doing a search pattern out here with a huge searchlight. And I go, yeah, I think so. He, he just belts out to his wife, Bonnie, phone 911, get a patch to the Coast Guard. And then he literally lifted me up and carried me into his family room or his front room and puts me down in a uh, recliner while we, and packed, packed my whole torso here with um, hot water bottles and a blanket and I had a herbal tea I was drinking, waiting for the ambulance that showed up 15 minutes later. But the Coast Guard couldn't believe the man in Bob and Bonnie's living room was the same man they were searching for. So after giving them nautical information about where he fell off, he they had one said, question. Were you wearing a life jacket? <laughs> it was really funny because I hesitated. I, I wasn't. I'm thinking, oh no, now am I going to be legally liable for the cost of the hovercraft the last eight hours looking for me? So I took a deep breath and said, no, I wasn't. And he goes, you, you've been in the water for three hours without a life jacket. I said, yes, sir, I, that's right. Well, as best I could because I was so hypothermic, I was just stammering. And there's a bit of a pause. He goes, wow, I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> After calling his relieved wife, who had only been notified 10 minutes earlier of his disappearance, David was raced to an emergency to the hovercraft. Coast. The minute I was on the Coast Guard um, stretcher, I believe the guy's name was Dan, he came right up into my face, he put a slap his hand on my, on my lap, he said, hi, my name's Dan, I'm the medical specialist of, I can't remember the name of the hovercraft, of the hovercraft, I'm assisted here with Mike, my assistant, you're in good hands. We're both experts in, in hypothermia. Then he had this ear-to-ear -ear grin. He goes, I've been praying for you all night. He says, you've had divine intervention here tonight, son. He says, we are so glad to see you. He says, we knew you'd, we'd find you, but we didn't expect to see you smiling back at us. But when he saw the crew taking out a defibrillator, he realized just how serious his situation was. He says, normal body temperature is 36 and a half. I go, yeah, so I was 32, so what? He goes, well, at 31, you can suffer a massive cardiac arrest. He says, you've already hiked perhaps two or three miles. You're hiked for an hour out of the water. He says, you've been in this house for a warm house for, you know, however minutes, into the ambulance, and you're still only 32? We're not sure how cold you got, so we're not taking any chances. David was checked out thoroughly at the hospital and released but the journey to full recovery has taken a long time. It took me a full year to recover, yeah. In oh, yeah. fact, uh, eight weeks or two months later, I, uh, I was able to return to work, but I, I could not do any physical exercise for at least six months without expending anything that I had begun to rebuild. I had, I actually lost seven pounds in that night. But it's the inward changes that have affected him most. I'm a little bit more peaceful. I don't, I don't think I suffer from anxiety or patience. I've been told by other people that I'm incredibly patient. He sums it up with two words, trust and control. In the frigid water, he realized he ultimately had no control over whether he lived or died. And that has freed him to trust in the God he committed his life to. I give all the credit to him. He had a lesson to teach me. He had, uh, and now you know, it's funny because since my swim, as you know, I've written a little pamphlet about it, and, and I have been able to speak about God openly in the cockpits to flight attendants, to passengers on board airplanes. It has opened a huge door to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus, and it's just been an amazing opportunity. Some men, some women were, are more open to it, of course, and others, of course, just say, well, no, nah, you did it. You're in such good shape. You did this. It's, don't tell me it was a miracle. I'm going, look, okay, if I was in Honolulu and the water was 80 degrees, yeah, maybe if I was in such good shape, shape. But nobody can withstand hypothermia. You cannot train your body to withstand something that it's just naturally going to occur. You're going to die. It was, I mean, that's, that was what I hit the water with. I am going to die unless some supernatural event happened. And a supernatural event did happen. 
More than one event, David says, his life saved, his boat protected, and his family spared worry. His faith will never be the same. On British Columbia's Georgia Strait, Cheryl Weber, 100 Huntley Street.